Yeah. Father, we give you praise and we exalt your name for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for our lives and thank you for what you've been doing for us. We're so grateful. Um, we can't thank you enough. Um, if we're thanking you and if all our whole system should be our mouth, we just keep saying thank you for the rest of our lives. But you know, Lord, you've been so gracious. Thank you this morning how you know you revealed your love on earth, on mankind. And Lord, is so awesome. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We give Elohu praise. Yesterday we started with the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And by the grace of Elohu, we were able to get up to verse 10. And then we today we want to round up and then summarize everything in this parable. And in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 20, which is where we got our text for the parable of the of the laborers in the vineyard. Then we read, it says, But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. Those he called quite early in the morning into the vineyard. He caught some in the morning, came back again about the ninth hour and the sixth hour to call people in. And then he continued. And then when it was evening and it's time to pay, he gave them what they agreed with him. And the agreement was one penny, a penny for each. So those that came in the morning also agreed to that one penny and then they came in. So but when those who came in are much later also received a penny, then that was the time they started complaining and they um and they said and when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying these last have wrought but an hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. This not thou agree with me for a penny, it was only one penny, you agreed with me, and I have paid it. And then he said unto him, and as we continue, sorry, just to get back to the to the page. Then take that, take that thy is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thy eye evil because I am good? So that the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. For many be called, but few chosen. You know, brethren, most times as preachers, when we are preaching by the grace of God, we know how to take some um, verses and a context and talk about it. A lot of people, including myself, we preached messages on and those that will be first will be last, and the last shall be first. And then it says, many are called, but few are chosen. But there was a context. Something happened before that statement came. And the Elohim was trying to explain. So, brethren, the lessons we will get from here on all these we read yesterday and today is that number one, the vineyard is the Lord's. We got that yesterday. That's number one lesson. The second lesson out of the second out of the seven is God recruits. We looked at that yesterday. We don't call ourselves. He called us. So to answer a call is a privilege given to us to come and collaborate with him in his vineyard. Um, you know, I usually give that experience when they kings of these worlds or the presidents of these worlds or the governors of these worlds invite us to uh, their, you know, whatever they are doing. Uh, we don't just keep quiet and go. We share with our friends, we share with our relatives, we share with colleagues at work, and then um, a month before the time, two weeks before the time, everyone is asking, have you got your dress? Are you ready? So what are you wearing? Or how do you feel? The night towards that, just like everyone and on Monday, when you come back to work, everybody wants to know, how did, you, how did it go? 
Once you come back home, phone calls and everything, see how men feel privileged to go into the courts of the earthly kings and then dignitaries. Now, the Elohim of the whole world, the king of kings, lord of lords, has invited us into his vineyard to go and labor. If you don't see it that way, you will complain. If you don't see it that way, you will murmur. But the third lesson we will hear, we will get from here is there is opportunity for everyone. There's opportunity. Whether you are called 10 years ago or today or 20 years ago or 40 years ago, there is opportunity. And we saw that yesterday because the harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers are few. Not one person will do the work. Not at all. Number four lesson we saw yesterday is that he decides the reward. That's what we look into today. He decides the reward. And the reward he, he promised to them is a penny. Brethren, the ways of the Lord are far different from our ways. Our interpretations are the way we see things. Our meanings are quite different from his. The Bible says here, a penny. Everlasting life is everlasting life. Amen. There's no other word for it. There's no other thing. It's a package. It says, I will pay you a penny. I will pay you everlasting life. He said to them in John, 12, in John 14, 1, Why are you troubled? I'm going, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in the Father, also believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I will not tell you. In that mansion, he says so many good things. Brethren, eternal life. We cannot imagine what good the Lord has kept there for us. But our carnal mind may not take that. We need it explicitly, you know, exp um, exposited one by one. You get a car, you get a um, shoe, you get dress, you get house, you buy a ship. You buy an airplane, and that's the carnal mind. Because the Bible says the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of Elohim. That's the carnal mind. He says everlasting life. May the Lord open our eyes to see what everlasting life is all about. To be with him forever. Where there will not be any sun on any moon anymore, but he shall be our light. We will not no more sorrow. We will not hunger anymore, for he will be our bread of life. There will not be any more death that will be gone. No more sickness that will be gone. No more pain that will be gone. No more disappointment is gone. That's what this word is for. But he has promised us. So brethren, let's pray that the Lord will open our eyes to see and to behold him. You know, the uh, brother Stephen asked a question on our Wednesday Bible study. He says the men on their way to Emmaus, why is it that they did not feel Christ? They did not see him. Brethren, if you do not ask the Lord on that prayer that you may know him, he may be beside you. You, don't, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't see him. But our prayer is that, Lord, we may see Yahweh, Elohim, in his glory. Number fifth there is idleness goes with what? Excuses. We saw that yesterday and our prayer is that all the excuses we've been given is we will all drop them off in the name of Yeshua because there's a lot to do for the Lord. A lot. If you don't know, for us here in this ministry, there's a lot for us to do. A lot of places have been opened. A lot of countries, the global school of ministry have gone into them. But we need manpower to follow those countries up. They need to communicate with somebody. They can't do it with only Apostle and I. They need people who will come in and say, can you allow, give me Cote d'Ivoire and I can communicate with brethren in Cote d'Ivoire. Whatsoever they need, I will send it to them. The materials they need, I can send it to them. And then the help they will need, whatever, let me be that to make sure that I meet with them weekly or monthly so that this word can go across in French, even if it means my going over to see what we can do. 
we need someone to say, come on, Liberia, they've done so well. Thank God for Apostle Amos. But it's just him and the brethren there. Can I go to be a source of help so that he can stay? We need someone who can go to the Philippines. They work out there to go and uh, um, support uh, Apostle Nere and says, you've started this work years ago, but where is it right now? We need you. Our brethren in India, they need some people to come. They have trainings. Two years ago, Apostle and I would have been there. And we also planned last year, we didn't go in. They have hundreds of pastors at different locations. How many will want to go? We have our brethren right here in South African region, in East African region, in Asia. We need. So there's nothing that I don't know what to do. You may not even have to go the end physically. But now, in this virtual world, you can communicate. Brethren, your streets and your neighborhood are all filled out with people. In the fellowship and in the church where you are, it's everyone in your community in that church. Brethren, let's go and knock on doors in our shopping centers and invite them over to the church. And invite them, even if they don't want to come, we can start up one or two fellowships in their own houses. Hallelujah. We can start up a WhatsApp group. We can start up a Facebook page. Brethren, it's just that the issue there is everybody wants their own. What they will call their own. But if you're not looking for your own, you will see that there's a lot. You know, this morning the Lord was also reminding me, you know, brethren, when we, you know, those days. And then who will be among those who will stand because it's an unchanging gospel. So don't change. Those days when we got born again, do we care whether we are the pastors or anything? We had the truth and it was sweet. We went out to invite everyone we know into church. Apostle and I were yesterday, I was looking at one of them. You know, people were congratulating him his birthday. He, his birthday was on Thursday and then I didn't um, realize and it reminded me, brethren, you know, going out to morning cry street to street, door to door, every door in my community. And brethren, here am I today. They are not in the same church with me. But the good thing is that they are born again. They are born again. Those days it was not out for me. And I looked around. One of the ladies that told me about the slave, slave trade was quite very old lady. Very old lady. And I want to minister to her. Even when I knocked on her door, I was thinking, um, will she respond? Or is there not any dementia or anything? But the Lord said to me, go in. Brethren, I moved in. Do you know this lady received the word? Do you know this lady in her stick went to church? One of the days was telling me about the slave trade. Brethren, I was so shocked. She's gone to glory now in those days. Brethren, door to door. It's not about me getting my own church. The thing is get everyone to hear the word. I pray that all this church thing and all this title thing will take us, you know, will will we go away from us. All this trying to grab our own. There's a lot to do in that local community. There's a lot to preach. There's a lot of people to reach out to. At workplaces, in the shopping complex, and show them the way to come into the kingdom come into the church and be the word. May the Lord bless us and help us. In Yeshua's name, amen. So number six of that is the for those, there's a lesson for those who fight for their right in the church. Who fight for their right? It's my right. I know I'm heavily anointed. I know I can do this. Please, may the Lord deliver everyone from, what do you call it now? Um, um, self um, deceit and then uh, may the Lord also deliver us you know when people are so much into themselves and, and conceit we say people are conceited the Bible says let no man think highly than you ought to think of yourself today ask the Lord humble me anyway I'm thinking more highly I think I can do this I think I can do this I am this I am that no way we're going to read the account of Paul in a minute now or, you know, much later, to see the life of Paul, an example for each and every one of us. 
So please, for those who fight for their right, oh, I'm supposed to be an apostle now, but it's just that I'm not yet ordained. I'm supposed to be a bishop by now. Oh, I'm supposed to be this. I'm forget about those things. They, they don't make any meaning. The most important thing is on the last day, who are your downlines? Those of us into multi-level marketing, you know what I mean. Your downlines. What are those who are going to stand beside you at your back and say, Lord, I give you praise. She was the one that knocked at my door. She slipped in that truck. She was the one that, you know, visited me. She was the one that followed me up. She was the one. Even though I went out and came back in, she still, he still stood by me. Oh, that's the pastor. The true word that came from him kept me strong in him. Brethren, this should be our primary concern and forget about all these owning and owning places. Satan knows about the division in the church, that if the church is divided, the strength of the church will dissipate. And he knows that if we are one, he can never come in. So what does he do? He dissipates the power of the church by getting people conceited of you know, things they are not. And when that happens, then the church that should have fought like one man goes apart. And then the strength is not there again. The good work the Lord has started will not be there anymore because people are going to go on their own without knowledge, without understanding, without anything. And Satan is telling them, go, 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 you can make it. Remember, he did it with our Lord Jesus right there at the mount of um, temptation he offered him three things but thank god he's in him and it's an example he didn't he went through it for me and for you so that we can learn that lesson and not fall to that trick of satan anymore may the lord help us to stand strong and the seventh lesson is the real man in you will manifest when things did not go the way you thought it will. You know, these men thought the Lord may, will increase their, their wages. And then, um, but when it wasn't increased, they were paid the same thing because that was what was agreed. Then they spoke, they murmured, they complained against the good man of the house. You know, sometimes you think you are complaining against your fellow human being. Be very careful. For the work is the Lord's, not ours. When you're complaining and murmuring, be very careful. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard these people. Those complaining and murmuring, uh, it's not for you. They are not for you, Moses. It's me. Brethren, that's a big lesson for me. When you're complaining and murmuring, it's against the Lord. Not against the fellow human being you're seeing. I pray that we stop seeing our fellow human being. And see Yeshua HaMashiach, our maker, so that we do everything in the context that we are serving him. When you are complaining and murmuring and gossiping and speaking evil and dividing the church, because most times the weak ones hear this and off they go. What Most times the ignorant ones who don't know your motive and what is in your heart and who you are, they will hear it off they go. You have truncated their, their, their future. You submerged it. But why? Just for selfishness. Because you do not want to take it. What did the Bible say in the book of um, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 5? It says, Perverse, disputing of, disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Gain is not godliness. From such, withdraw yourself. Brethren, withdraw yourself when you come into where god wants you to you hear someone complaining and murmuring and you give your ears to that i pity you because the enemy has got you cheap you may say oh he didn't catch me no way from my experiences once you've given your ear to that that's it it's like a biological weapon slow death it has gone in and it has gone in we give you some we watch the person and give them some little time you see them fizzle out because a poison had been injected in them. A venom had gone into them because they were not careful. They gave their ears to gossip. 
and they became a dumping ground of the enemy. So brethren, be watchful how you react to the Lord. Be watchful, thinking is man, oh, you didn't give me this, oh, did this didn't happen, or that. Be watchful. We saw that yesterday, and although, you know, we have been in the vineyard before others, that does not mean that it is only us that will be in the vineyard. For those of us who claim you are the only apostle, you are the only prophet, you are the only pastor in the church, nobody else is giving a room to come up, you can't do it by yourself. No, not at all. You can't do all. The Lord is still recruiting more apostles, more prophets, more teachers, more pastors, and more evangelists, more church workers, more follower people. You may be an apostle, that's fine, but you can't follow people up. Because there is grace for an apostleship, and there is great grace for those who follow up people. Great grace. You may be a pastor, that's fine, but you don't have the grace to sing to the glory of God. I keep telling people, those who are singing, you are not just singing. You're ministering to the Lord in songs. So you're doing the same thing. So prepare yourself. Pray very well. Go into the scriptures. And ask the Lord to open your eyes to what to sing. What will give the, you know, build up the people. Do you know? We remember songs more than the preachings. If you know that. Because of the power in songs. So brethren, no one is greater. If God has given you a, a gift, it's a gift. Don't think yours is smaller and the other person is greater. It's only one reward. And that reward is still the same word reward so brethren the bible says there the lord has agreed what to give so why complaining many who are first shall be last have you taken time to think about that why why is it that many are called few are chosen why is it that the lord continue to recruit every time brethren we can go into that message May the Lord open your eyes now. May the Holy Spirit speak to you to see so many things around it. I was born again in the 80s. That's fine. It's different from my children who are doing it right now in the 20s. In the, in the 20s. Brethren, it is different. Very, very. 2020. And, nine, and, and then 19... Um, 80 something there's a huge gap that is something years difference these children knows how to minister to their colleagues at school sometimes i'll say things while i'm ministering at the end because the family usually says what what did you get we usually sit down in the 10 minutes to you know everyone will come up with what they got from the teachings of daybreak with the king and then we say what did i get right what did i get wrong destiny will tell me uh, mom says yes and um, if i want my classmates to listen to your message and um, then i will want you to say it this way say it this way tell up this so that they can listen to it but what you've preached today you've pre ministered to adults brethren that was learning for me he corrected me he told me look i would like my classmates to listen to this message but this is the way you say it this is how you do it. Then ask us these questions so that something will be on our mind going. And then when you finish, we go on with it. Brethren, that's the way we learn in our house. So you see, I cannot say um, the way it worked out in the 80s. Then I can go out to do morning cry. But right here, right now, if you do morning cry, the police, of course, will come for you. And then not even to arrest you, send you straight to psychiatric hospital thinking before they can hear you out so you see things do change so the lord needs today's generation to minister to today's generation and need us also to continue so that they can get insight and wisdom from us hallelujah for every time and age there are still people my age who when these young people are talking to them they'll be relating it past if you check our messages most of our examples are those days those days no, the Lord still need everyone. The Lord need doctors in the kingdom so that they can minister to their colleagues and speak their scientific language. The Lord need lawyers in the kingdom 
so that they can speak their learned languages to their fellow, uh, you know, learned men, as they call themselves. Well, we thank God for them. The Lord need carpenters to come in into the kingdom because they can use the right language of nails and hammers and chisels and those people cannot understand. When you look at the parables, the Lord used so many things as examples of parables because he's ministering to diverse community. So it cannot be you. It cannot be just you. The Lord leads all of us into the kingdom. That's one. Two, were you called much later to come in? Think about it. As I mentioned yesterday, most of the very, very older ministers, where are they? I was watching one this week. Powerful man. When this man came to my school when I was 12 years old, I was one of the students that gave their life to the Lord and have held him in high regard. He preached so powerful that everyone was crying. You can imagine 11 and the 12 were crying. Another one came to the school when I was 11. It was crying. They preached so powerful message that the heart of young people were broken and we gave our life to the Lord. How one ended up? How? By going into other gospel. The things gift given to him for other people, for the ministry, for missions. He opened up a Bible college and was charging tremendous amount of money. And people were paying a lot to go and get educated. And by the time they finished, they come back to recoup their money. And that was how all this corruption into money, 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 money came in. One today is standing. All he's talking about is what God will do for you and how all your enemies will die. Can you believe it? A man that preached sound gospel nearly 40 years ago is now talking about all the enemies dying and the dying and people are coming. So because people have known him over the years, for the past 45, 50 years, and then they are following, they are listening, and I was watching the crowd. The Facebook was about 30 something thousand people have watched him and they were saying amen, amen. And what was he saying? Let this die, the other one die. Who, what do you mean? If you have died and as an unbeliever, would you have got the chance to get born again? That's not the prayer of our Lord. You see them going. Some have gone into money business. Some don't talk about sin anymore on their pulpit. Some now make people gods. You're okay. You're fine. Believe in yourself. You are these. You are great. You're a champion. No more Jesus Christ anymore. And now it's become a thing of ridicule. People now go on Facebook and they are ridiculing and making a blasphemy of our Christian life because of the bad examples of the older ones. So why wouldn't God call the young ones? But you younger one the Lord is calling. Do you have your eyes on the older ones? They are your mentors, they are your examples, and you dress like them, talk like them, do this, you are gone. Look unto Jesus. The Lord is still recruiting. If the older ones are disappointed, look, no one will disappoint him. He says, look, when he was telling his disciples, so he was telling the multitude, why are you telling the young children to keep quiet? If you all refuse, I will raise stones. He's able to raise stones. To himself. Brethren, that's our father. So those that came earlier that were complaining, they're complaining. But let's read what Paul said in um, just to round it up, to see those the Lord had called indeed what their testimony should be like. Let's use Paul as an example. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse um, 4 to 6 and 8 to 11. He says, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time, for I am the least of the apostles, that are not meant to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so we believe. This is a man who knows what the calling is. 
I was one born out of due season. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be. I'm the least. But although I labored more than them, there's no complaint. I'm grateful. Because I shouldn't have even come in in the first place. That should be our confession for older ministers. He continued again in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 33. Um, that's it for us today. He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labels more abundantly, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. The pattern I was, that was given to our Lord was given to him. Remember, the Lord said to Ananas, don't worry. I have shown him all that he will need to suffer for my name's sake. He took it with joy, not about complaining. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by my brethren, in perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils in the sea. Perils among false brethren, false. This is the one that breaks the heart. <laughs> With people outside, it's okay. But when you get into the hands of false brethren, wow. It's like this thing from the inside. In weariness and then painfulness. In watchings often, in hunger and thirst. In fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily. He said about it daily. The care of all the churches. He's still caring for them. Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is offended and I'm not born? And I born not? If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Not what gain I'll get from him. Not what house I'll build and the car I will buy in a short while. And not all the privileges and then all the um, knowing I'll get. No, not those things. He says, to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, know it that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the, the king, kept the city of Damascus, Damascus, with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket, I was let down by the wall. The great poor. Through here, I wonder how he did it. I was imagining. You know when you look at children's book, they drew him like this, and where he's put in a basket, and then a whole man was put in a basket. How many of us will allow that to happen? How many of us are going to say, no, it's not me, I'm going to challenge them. How many of us are going to say, how can he hold me? Who is half? If it's a hold you, tell me who is half. A man of humility. In a basket, he was let down by the wall and escaped his hands. He didn't stay back. For those of us who are so recalcitrant and those of us who wants to show up stubbornness and they are rude, they want to talk and everything, quietly because there's still things in his hand to do. The gospel needs to get to the Gentiles. For if I, if I should stay back and start commanding fire and brimstone to do what on king, <laughs> it will not work. He just kept himself nicely in the basket and they laid him down through the wall and he ran away because the gospel needs to continue. Brethren, may the Lord open our eyes in wisdom. This is a man who will not complain. This is a man who understands the calling. This is a man who wants to keep. No wonder he says, I run not as those who don't know what they are running. I run with sense because I know what is ahead of me. So that when I get there, I will run to brace the take. Not for, in, for corruptible crown, but for incorruptible crown. Hallelujah. He understood the calling. May we understand. May we never give up. May we not grow to the point where we think that, we, you know, this overseer thing and all those things and all those things. My prayer is that the Lord will start with me to keep me humble. Where Yeshua is. Don't let it go to your head. If it goes to your head, you'll uh, you get yourself as we started. 
oh, the fathers in the city, that's fine. There are fathers in the city, but know that we have an ultimate father, which is our Lord Yeshua Jesus. Oh, yes, the um, heroes of the, be careful how you allow people to give you that. They'll throw you off the cliff and you fall headlong. Remember, don't be among those. For those of us who have been in ministry much older, make sure no one exalts you above who you are. Still remain in service, serving the brethren, serving the Lord in fervency. For those of you who are coming in, don't copy the wrong. Continue. It's still the, left, the vineyard of our Elohim. There's still a lot to do for him. Whether he gets you in at 10 o'clock in midnight, of course, there's night shift. So people will come in. The next day is still there. The laborers are quite few. Many are called. Few are chosen. Make sure you be among the faithful few. Who will like Paul that says when we finish, we will say what an unprofitable servant that we are. Who will like disciples who took the death, gruesome death, all oh, most of them, apart from John. All the, the others were either stoned or their head were cut off or they died in prison or they were crucified upside down or they burnt so many things, but they were looking for a greater. They remained humble. May the Lord help us to be among the few that will be chosen, will not be among the many that are called, but they missed it. Father, we give you praise and thank you for this wonderful parable of laborers in the vineyard. Lord, the seven key lessons we learned today help us, Jesus, to know that the vineyard is still yours. You are the good man. Humble ourselves. Keep on to the work. Keep on being faithful till the last. Help us to understand what your reward is. It's huge. It's mercy. It's nothing compared to what we're seeing here on earth. And help us not to imagine it with our carnal minds to see you for who you are thank you precious father for we'll be among the few that will be chosen in Yeshua Jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah amen some announcement we have some birthdays today <clears throat> pastor um, Silvius Cooper um, the worship leader at family worship center Sheffield and our worship leader at open gate Oh, today is his birthday, Pastor Silvius. Happy birthday. I'm Evangelist Maisha Ma Lake of New York. Today also is um, her birthday. Minister Regina, um, Regina Turner and uh, Kerry George and uh, um, our own um, ah, Kedisha Carpenter of GPRC. Today is her birthday. Wow. Thank the Lord and Sister Dupe will be um, of um, um, Nigeria, also her birthday. May the Lord bless you and we pray for all of you at Daybreak with the King line. Amen.